Good morning, bonjour, buongiorno, guten morgen, dobro jutro. Warm greetings from The Hague in the Netherlands and a very warm welcome to the very first online live announcement of the winners of the European Heritage Awards, Europa Nostra Awards. While hoping that you have all recovered from last week's excitement around the Eurovision Song Contest held not far from The Hague in Rotterdam, I'm delighted to host this online event dedicated to Europe's Heritage Contest 2021. Let me greet the hundreds of heritage professionals and volunteers who have joined us from many different countries all around Europe and beyond and a special welcome to the representatives of the honorable and proud laureates of the 2021 edition of our European Awards. You have had the very difficult task of keeping this exciting news top secret for a few weeks now, but the moment has finally arrived for us to make your achievements public and start celebrating them with you. To begin, let me briefly introduce to you the European Heritage Awards, Europa Nostra Awards, Europe's highest honor in the heritage world and Europa Nostra's flagship program run in partnership with the European Commission for sharing best practices in the heritage field and from, for promoting their power of example. Through the European Heritage Awards, Europa Nostra Awards, we celebrate Europe's rich cultural heritage we recognize the most outstanding examples of best practice and we reward the excellence and dedication of Europe's heritage professionals and volunteers. Over the course of the past 19 years, the European Heritage Awards, European Nostra Awards, have championed the most compelling heritage projects from across the continent in three different categories, heritage conservation, research, as well as education, training, and awareness raising. We have also honored individuals and organizations for their exceptional dedication to heritage. These awards are only possible thanks to the long-standing and fruitful partnership between Europa Nostra and the European Commission. For this reason, I'm particularly honored and pleased to welcome Maria Gabriel, European Commissioner for Innovation, Research, Culture, Education and Youth, who will later on address and honor our laureates together with Professor Dr. Hermann Patzinger, Executive President of Europa Nostra. Good morning and welcome, dear Commissioner, dear Maria, and good morning and welcome, dear Hermann Patzinger. But first, we are very honored and proud to share with you a very special video message which we have received from David Sassoli, President of the European Parliament. Video, please. Buongiorno a tutti, sono molto felice di inaugurare questo evento dal vivo che tra pochi minuti annuncerà i vincitori degli European Heritage Awards. Prima di tutto però permettetemi di salutare e di congratularmi con tutti i partecipanti che in quest'anno così difficile hanno presentato le migliori pratiche nella conservazione, nella valorizzazione del patrimonio culturale europeo. Attraverso la vostra professionalità, la vostra dedizione, la sensibilità artistica avete contribuito a rilanciare l'Europa di oggi e a proiettarla nel futuro, promuovere lo scambio trasformato l'aliero delle conoscenze è una priorità per l'Unione Europea. Come sapete da più di un anno facciamo i conti con un nemico invisibile, il Covid, che ha avuto delle ripercussioni drammatiche sui nostri sistemi sanitari, ha minacciato la coesione delle nostre società, ha minato i nostri modelli economici, ha aumentato anche le disuguaglianze, ha aggravato le condizioni delle persone più fragili, più vulnerabili. Tuttavia se c'è una lezione che abbiamo potuto imparare in questi mesi così difficili è il senso della nostra interdipendenza e dunque per affrontare le sfide della contemporaneità c'è bisogno del contributo di tutti. 
e in questo senso pochi giorni fa abbiamo inaugurato la conferenza sul futuro dell'Europa che ha l'obiettivo di stimolare una riflessione sul nostro futuro comune perché è nostro interesse primario ridurre le disuguaglianze, rendere la democrazia più accessibile e funzionante e soprattutto realizzare una società più equa. E in questo contesto la cultura e il patrimonio artistico sono, non sono elementi secondari, ma rappresentano strumenti fondamentali per favorire la nostra coesione, per rafforzare la nostra umanità, per eh, dare senso alla nostra appartenenza. Desidero quindi congratularmi con Europa Nostra per aver avuto l'idea di organizzare i dibattiti sul futuro dell'Europa nei luoghi del nostro patrimonio culturale europeo. Per costruire il nostro domani dobbiamo attingere alle fondamenta del nostro patrimonio comune perché i luoghi raccontano la nostra storia comune. Per innamorarsi dell'Europa dobbiamo mettere al centro anche le nostre emozioni non ci innamoriamo di un mercato comune e soprattutto non possiamo costruire relazioni durature senza la creatività, l'arte, la poesia, i sentimenti. Sono tutti elementi che vivono in noi e a cui dobbiamo dare valore. L'iniziativa della Commissione europea per un nuovo Bauhaus europeo va esattamente in questa direzione e dimostra non solo maggiore sensibilità da parte delle istituzioni e della politica, ma anche la volontà di unire l'estetica, l'accessibilità al tema della sostenibilità sociale e ambientale. Per questo non possiamo fare a meno della cultura, del nostro patrimonio, sono elementi essenziali da cui ripartire e da cui rilanciare le nostre politiche. In conclusione sono molto felice di sapere che il prossimo Summit dei Beni Culturali si terrà a Venezia il 23 e 24 settembre, un appuntamento importante che oltre a promuovere l'arte, lo spettacolo, il patrimonio artistico ha l'obiettivo di far incontrare i professionisti della cultura, di stimolare un confronto con le istituzioni e la politica. Vi ringrazio ancora, spero di potervi incontrare a Venezia e vi auguro naturalmente buon lavoro. On behalf of all of us, uh, a very big thank you to President Sassoli for this very, very forceful message. Um, the support of the European Parliament for the vital role of cultural heritage for the future of our Europe is indeed an immense encouragement for us all. And uh, on behalf of Europa Nostra, a very special thanks to President Sassoli for supporting our initiative uh, that we have launched on the 9th of May, inviting all of you um, to organize uh, debates on the future of Europe in heritage sites known and less known in cities and villages across Europe. Please follow that uh, call uh, and do it. And uh, a special thanks also to Commissioner Gabriel and Vice President uh, Dubroka Schuitz, uh, who is also the co-chair of the Conference uh, of the uh, Future of Europe for having embraced that initiative. I think you will find in the chat more information of this initiative. And as you have just heard, uh, President uh, David Sassoli has also unveiled uh, our dream that we want to make come true to organize uh, as a first physical event uh, since the outbreak of the pandemic uh, the new European Heritage Summit in Venice on the 23rd and 24th of uh, September. We very much hope that that will indeed happen, that all of you and many of you will be able to come to uh, Venice and there we will celebrate um, in person the laureates of our awards. So this is uh, a hope and uh, let's make it happen. We also have somebody else, an important personality who wanted to share a special message for this occasion. Um, as you know, this semester, Portugal is holding the rotating presidency of the European Union. And uh, it is uh, the Portuguese Minister of Culture, Graça Fonseca, who has recorded a special message for this occasion. Video, please. European Heritage Awards, Europa Nostra Awards, are an annual initiative that distinguishes the best conservation projects, the most innovative research projects, and the best awareness, training, and education programs in the area of cultural heritage. These awards, an initiative of the European Commission organized by Europa Nostra, represent a fundamental dialogue between European cultures, 
structure around the European shared cultural heritage. In fact, cultural heritage does not recognize borders. Languages, science and arts sail beyond the limits that geography and history establish. While we share culture, while we talk to each other, we jointly build a library of ourselves and that can and should be an endless library. My congratulations to all participants and to the winners because it is your work, dedication and talent that best represents these ideals. My thanks to the European Commission and Europa Nostra for this annual initiative so important for our shared European project. We warmly thank Minister Fonseca uh, for her support. We know how much Portugal is a country in the European Union that supports the cause of cultural heritage. And uh, recently, also during the meeting of the Council of Ministers under the chairmanship of Portugal. So special thanks to them. And it's great that in this way, they are also present um, um, in, for this uh, online event. Now, the much awaited moment has arrived. It is time to reveal the 24 winners from 18 different European countries that have been selected for the 2021 edition of our European Heritage Awards program. Before playing the video that will make that announcement, let me say a very warm word of thanks to all members of the four awards juries, chaired by Professor Kuhn van Balen from Belgium, Monsieur Etienne Poncelet from France, Mrs. Andrula Vassiliou from Cyprus, and Mrs. Cristina Vanini from Italy. Each member of the jury has demonstrated the utmost dedication and professionalism in studying the dossiers and selecting the winners. They have done it on a voluntary basis, generously offering their time and expertise and sharing their deep knowledge in the field. So thank you all on behalf of Europa Nostra and the European Commission for such an exemplary contribution. I know you cannot wait anymore and you are right, so let's play the video and unveil the laureates of our European Heritage Awards, Europa Nostra Awards 2021.
a big applause for all our laureates. What an amazing mosaic of very diverse award-winning project personalities and organizations. They all convey moving and meaningful messages which are connected to all key European policy priorities. I'm sure our executive president, Professor Dr. Hermann Patzinger, shares my and your enthusiasm. So let me take you to Berlin and give the floor to Hermann Patzinger. Dear Hermann, the floor is yours. Thank you, Sneska. Dear Commissioner Gabriel, dear award laureates, dear colleagues and friends. In a year in which Europe's institutions and citizens are engaged in shaping a shared vision of the future of our continent, we are delighted to present the 2021 winners of the European Heritage Awards, Europa Nostra Awards. Each of our winners perfectly illustrates the way in which cultural heritage can contribute to Europe's post-pandemic recovery and to the long-term resilience of our societies, economy, and environment. In total, Europe's highest honor in the field of cultural heritage has been awarded to 24 laureates from 18 European countries for their outstanding accomplishments and dedication to cultural heritage. This year's winners strongly demonstrate how cultural heritage is a powerful and positive catalyst for change, as well as a key contributor for, to achieving the core priorities of the European Union. As we are mobilizing to make Europe a more sustainable, beautiful and inclusive place to live, through the Euro new European Bauhaus, it is highly symbolic that one of our awards goes to Germany for the exemplary conservation of one of the first homes in Weimar built in line with the historic Bauhaus movement. And this building was the first real Bauhaus building. As we are committed to making the EU a climate neutral place by 2050 through the European Green Deal, our award winners offer inspiring examples of how cultural heritage can contribute to realizing this ambition in line with key recommendations contained in our European Cultural Heritage Green Paper. From applying the principles of circular economy to the built environment through the adaptive reuse of the Gare Maritime in Brussels to addressing the pollution cause caused by the modern garment industry through a collaborative project in Denmark and Greece. As we prepare for the upcoming conference on the future of Europe, which will foster a collective debate on Europe's challenges and priorities, a thought-provoking exhibition in Italy tackles misinformation, promotes critical thinking and highlights our core democratic values. When we prepare to shape our future, exploring the past to understand our present is of utmost importance. The permanent exhibition at the European Solidarity Centre in Gdansk, Poland, highlights the importance of labour and how this built the Europe that we know today. We also wish to honour and celebrate the work of the Technical Committee for Cultural Heritage from Cyprus, which has demonstrated the power of cultural heritage to cross and bridge the many divides and to nurture the culture of peace and dialogue between the Greek Cypriot and the Turkish Cypriot communities. As we strive to make Europe fit for the digital age, this year's laureates show how cultural heritage is an innovative sector that produces digital and creative solutions that are relevant also beyond the field of heritage alone. For example, by using artificial intelligence for preventive conservation of buildings in Spain, or by automatically processing environmental data to mitigate structural damage in the Vargia Rockat complex in Georgia. Last but not least, at a time when public funding for culture and heritage may experience significant budget pressures due to the multidimensional crisis caused by the COVID-19 pandemic, there is an urgent need to secure complementary funding sources to ensure the sustainability of the sector, in particular from private actors and philanthropy. 
The redesign of the historic Fredensborg Palace Garden in Denmark is an example of an economically viable intervention made thanks to a combination of public and private funding. The renovation of 18 Ormond K Upper in Dublin also made possible thanks to public and private grants has set up an innovating funding model that was deliberately designed to be replicable for other projects. And let us also mention the outstanding work of the Ciro Castra Foundation in Albania. All these are just a few examples of heritage excellence across Europe that the European Union and Europa Nostra wish to honor today. Ladies and gentlemen, at a moment when Europe and the world are finally yet slowly coming out of the COVID-19 pandemic, we are grateful for the uplifting messages of savoir faire and savoir vivre that our award laureates convey. They demonstrate that our cultural heritage has the power to unite us, nurture a sense of continuity and belonging, anchor people to places, and convey a sense of shared experience, inspiring in this way reflection on a common future. Europe is yet again at a crossroads, and we ought to demonstrate once again that together we are able to forcefully tackle the great challenges of our time. Be it a climate or a health crisis, in these difficult times, we have to stand by our values. As you have seen today, our award winners embody fundamental values like inclusion, tolerance, cooperation, and solidarity on which the European, the European way of life is based. But we ought to be hopeful and also ambitious for the future. As the president of the European Commission, Ursula von der Leyen said at the State of the Union conference held in Florence earlier this month, I quote, Europe is a story of new beginnings. After every crisis came a European renaissance. May the post-pandemic future lead us to a new European renaissance, one where cultural heritage is placed where it belongs, at the very heart of the European project. Today, on behalf of Europa Nostra, I warmly congratulate every one of our 24 laureates for being the true heroes of this vital Europe of cultures. Together with our many members and partners, the Europa Nostra champions, the tremendous soft power of the Europe of hearts and the Europe of talents, which receive ever-growing support from the European Union, especially thanks to you, thanks to the strong leadership demonstrated by Commissioner Maria Gabriel. We shall therefore continue federating the many heritage sites and stakeholders, and we shall continue celebrate their manifold positive impact on our society, economy, and environment through this award scheme run in partnership with the European Commission for the past two decades. We very much hope to further develop this win-win-win partnership for many more years to come. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, uh, Herman. Thank you for sharing with our laureates and our audience so many key messages of importance for our European cultural heritage movement. Uh, and thank you for endorsing the call launched by Ursula von der Leyen for a new European renaissance. Let's be ambitious indeed. And uh, dear Herman, thank you for your leadership of Europa Nostra. I mentioned that members of our jury are acting in voluntary capacity. You are also one of those many people who are contributing to our work in a, as a volunteer. So thank you because you are also one of Europe's heritage heroes could truly make a difference. Now from uh, Berlin, we go to Brussels. Um, and it is my great honor and pleasure to um, present and introduce uh, our great supporter. Uh, and I dare say also friend of Europe's cultural heritage, Madame Maria Gabriel, European Commissioner for Innovation, Research, Culture, Education and Youth. Um, or we could perhaps also call you European Commissioner of Europe of the Talents and Europe of the Heart, which is a, a particular responsibility. 
So we have been together uh, with you, uh, this team, uh, um, on the 22nd of March, when we presented the European Cultural uh, Heritage Green Paper, uh, also together with the European Investment Bank Institute. So it was also online and we were uh, together, you were with us there and supported us. One month later, on the 8th of April, you were also with us for the announcement of the seven most endangered lists for 2021. And today, you are with us for this live announcement of the 2021 winners of the European Heritage Awards, Europa NOS Awards. Madam Commissioner, dear, Gabri dear, dear Maria Gabriel, the floor is yours. Thank you. Thank you very much, dear Executive President, dear Secretary General, dear Sneska, dear Award Laureates, dear friends of cultural heritage. I'm really delighted to be here with you today for the announcement of the winners of the European Heritage Awards, Europa Nostra Awards. Yes, this is a great opportunity, great opportunity to celebrate Europe's rich cultural heritage, and it is about recognizing the commitment and amazing work that all of you do for the preservation and enhancement of our heritage. We are all aware that our cultural heritage is a precious resource. Cultural heritage can be an economic asset, a tourist attraction, and at the same time, it can contribute to social cohesion. It belongs to all of us, and it is a great source of unique and creative jobs that show the richness of Europe. Therefore, we must continue to safeguard and promote it, not only for its important role in economic growth, employment and community building, but especially because it is our responsibility towards future generations. And your projects prove to all of us how important it is to understand and preserve our past in order to better build our present and future. And you have our immense gratitude for that. Cultural heritage is also at the heart of climate change that was mentioned today. The fight against climate change requires creative exchange between many disciplines, including cultural heritage, and this must be one of our key priorities to build together a sustainable future for Europe. Allow me again here to congratulate Europa Nostra for the launching of the European Cultural Heritage Green Paper on 22nd of March. It aims to integrate cultural heritage into climate action and inspire the mobilization of European citizens for common solutions. And your engagement, as well as the engagement of all cultural and creative operators, will also be much visible through our key initiative, the New European Bauhaus. The New European Bauhaus, as you know, is a creative and interdisciplinary initiative calling on citizens to reimagine their living spaces and communities in a greener, inclusive, and beautiful way. And this is where the new European Bauhaus prices come in. And your ideas, the knowledge and creativity of the heritage sector will be instrumental to our success. Some of your projects can serve as an exemplary models of preservation that enhance access to cultural heritage for all and illustrate the impact of the arts for sustainable community building. So those of you that are already committed to, committed to contributing to the new European Bauhaus like Europa Nostra, thank you and be with us. To all those that have not joined yet, please participate, we count on you. And I invite you to discover the numerous examples among the award-winning projects today that show how cultural heritage can become a cornerstone for sustainable development and help build a greener world. European Heritage Awards recognize the best conservation projects, the most impressive research, the most dedicated heritage professionals, the best educational programs to raise awareness of cultural heritage. And in this way, they become a source of inspiration for the exchange of good practices and new projects. 
Protecting cultural heritage means not only to ensure its restoration, but also the preventive conservation, valorization, and transmission of cultural assets. In the category conservation, for instance, we have laureates from all across Europe, Belgium, Germany, Denmark, Spain, Georgia, Greece, Ireland, and Romania. They illustrate that conservation or the reuse of heritage buildings can contribute to the objectives of the European Green Deal. They might encourage also other heritage projects to take up those innovative ideas and provide best practices. At the same time, we have the category research with the project from Spain and two collaborative projects from Greece, Denmark and Greece, Netherlands, which are excellent examples of linking research technology and the conservation of our material culture. They develop new cutting edge technologies, digital tools and innovative solutions to preserve and safeguard the heritage sites. Allow me to point out here that research and innovation actions under Horizon 2020 have invested nearly 600 million euro in developing innovative tools to restore and protect cultural heritage. And with the new Horizon Europe program, we will continue investing in safeguarding the cultural heritage through a dedicated intervention area in cluster two, culture, creativities, and this with synergies with other clusters. Now in the category dedicated service, we have remarkable examples of dedication to cultural heritage from heritage organizations and professionals from Albania, Cyprus, Italy, Portugal. Their know-how and dedication give us inspiration and encouragement to preserve and promote our heritage that offer us a sense of belonging and comfort in time of crisis. And last but not least, the protection and enhancement of cultural heritage is a long-term process which can only be fully promoted if skills and knowledge are transferred across generations. In, in many instances, respect for and awareness of cultural heritage must be learned. And it is for this reason that through our programs like Erasmus+, Plus, the European Solidarity Corps, we aim at strengthening young people's awareness and understanding of cultural heritage. So in the category education, training and awareness, raising, we have laureates from Bulgaria, Spain, Italy, Netherlands, Poland, United Kingdom, and a collaborative project Finland, Serbia, Italy, and Spain. They are focused on how our shared heritage can enhance the cultural diversity, foster tolerance and dialogue between communities, as well as on critical thinking and interpreting the heritage through e-learning platforms. And finally, I'm very proud that the seven-year long-term European budget we managed to achieve an ambitious budget dedicated on culture and cultural heritage. Just to mention our flagship programs, Creative Europe, Horizon Europe, Erasmus Plus. Under the Horizon Europe, I already mentioned that there will be a new cluster on culture, but we envisage a dedicated cluster and innovative platforms that will enrich cultural experiences through the creation of a European cultural heritage cloud. We have the European Institute of Innovation and Technology. A new knowledge and innovation community will be created on cultural and creative sectors and industry. The new Creative Europe program for the first time ever includes a new approach addressing the needs of cultural heritage. And furthermore, yes, we'll continue to support the Heritage Award initiatives. Ladies and gentlemen, I strongly believe that the preservation and enhancement of our shared heritage is key to Europe's sustainable and resilient future. I warmly congratulate all these 24 laureates from 18 different countries as ambassadors of the beauty of heritage in Europe. With achievements 
ranging from research and skillful restoration to high quality education and training or a lifetime of dedication to cultural heritage. All these projects are fantastic and deserve our attention. I sincerely thank each one of them for their valuable contribution and commitment to preserve and enhance Europe's shared cultural heritage for present and future generations. Please have a look and vote until 5th of September for your favorite candidate for the Public Choice Award. And I wish to all of you a fantastic award ceremony and don't forget to vote online. Thank you so much, uh, Commissioner Gabriel, for your, as usual, very forceful and inspiring words. And you have somehow, you have been weaving uh, a, a, a net, almost a lace, uh, connecting all the countries and all those projects uh, and demonstrating very forcefully that indeed cultural heritage is so much more than a sector. It is a vector for achieving so many important objectives for our society, for our economy, environment, for the, the, the green transformation of our society. So we have so, so many challenges uh, uh, ahead of us and cultural heritage is there to demonstrate that we can contribute to um, all these challenges. And, um, and thank you also for, for um, to you and to all other EU institutions, uh, I would say for these breakthroughs that we now uh, are facing in, in various uh, new uh, programs and budgets that are available for support of cultural heritage world. Um, uh, with, the, with these supports, we can really truly together ensure the lasting legacy of our European year of cultural heritage that took place in 2018. And, um, and perhaps I could just, uh, because I know that you are uh, not afraid of big challenges, I just want to launch you another, on behalf of all of us, another big challenge. I mentioned at the beginning, the Eurovision Song Contest, uh, everybody is talking about it uh, in, in these last days. Why not, why not aspire? to have a Eurovision Heritage Contest. Uh, transform this formidable award scheme is something that will be broadcasted across uh, um, Europe. Um, so let's, let's work together in, in perhaps transforming. It's now a dream, but it might become a reality. So dear award laureates, um, um, dear colleagues and friends, we would have liked to give the floor to all 24 winners of this year's awards, but due to time and technical constraints, this is unfortunately not possible. But uh, to end this live announcement, we have invited a very special guest from Romania to share with you his personal testimonial. I'm talking about Elgen Vaida, who is the coordinator of the Ambulance for Monuments from Romania, last year's winners of our Public Choice Award, and who is also a member of one of our Heritage Awards jury in the category Education, Training and Awareness Raising. So why have we picked up Elgen Vaida and invited him to join us? First, as I said, laureate of the Public Choice Award and Commissioner Gabriel just encouraged you to vote for this year's Public Choice uh, Award. But also um, last year when in November we had our ceremony and we, when we unveiled the Public Choice Award, unfortunately Elgen was lying in hospital because he was infected by coronavirus. And we couldn't see him in person. He's fortunately fit, fully recovered, and working very forcefully for, the, um, uh, for his project and for many other heritage initiatives in is he, is his country. And uh, so that's why we thought that uh, he has a special message to share with all of you on this special occasion. Dear Elgen, please tell us what is award has meant for you, your team, and your project? Thank you. Thank you, Tomaska, and everyone else. Uh, 
and uh, it's very difficult for me to speak after Commissioner Gabriel. Uh, I'm just coming from the side, change my clothes a little bit to to participate in the in the, your uh, presentation. So we are the ambulance for monuments. We have uh, been uh, in putting uh, safe endangered buildings, uh, over 50 of them in Romania over the last uh, six years. And we were always struggling to find the, the partners to, to, to find communities which are, um, let's say, open uh, to collaborate with us and to save their heritage. But since we got the European Heritage Award, it's quite easier for us to, to, to do this work because now communities and um, owners of buildings are coming to us. They know exactly how, how the project is working and it's very easy us, uh, for us to, to help them. And uh, it was uh, a great help uh, also for the partners. I must admit we have many sponsors since last years which uh, wanted to join our efforts to save heritage. So, um, and also European partners. We all got into a partnership with an, another European uh, uh, Heritage Award project uh, from Greece uh, last year after the awards. And our life is much easier now. But uh, the fact is that uh, I felt that there is a lot of uh, energy in Europa Nostra and I would like to invite all the, the other uh, participants which have a good project to, to go to, to come to the, uh, to the awards to participate because I feel that we have a social responsibility these days. We need to get more audience to heritage in order to save it. So that's why I think that publishing our work uh, and uh, make it well known during the Public Choice Award, of course, and um, other things are so important. So that's why I'm inviting everyone to also, I congratulate the, the laureates uh, to and uh, invite them to, to struggle to get their message spread uh, and to get into a strong competition for the Public uh, Choice Award. Uh, in the jury, I was uh, very happy to participate as a member and uh, really seeing that uh, projects can contribute to to uh, to uh, religious um, uh, let's say tolerance and to interethnic tolerance uh, and uh, all these important uh, values of Europe, Europe uh, which we Romania and the other uh, West uh, Eastern European countries are are members of. Uh, I also like to um, say that I, I noticed that many of the projects awarded are actually coming from, from South European countries, which shows me and others that there is actually not a Europe with two gears, but it's one only Europe, uh, which we're all uh, members of. And uh, we see in Western countries that we have also uh, buildings which are threatened by demolition, threatened by disappearance. So, uh, I'm glad to see that also European uh, countries can come with a model and be of inspiration for other uh, participants all over Europe. So I would again congratulate all the others and invite them to participate in, uh, in the Public Choice Award. Uh, I think it's really important to be a member of Europa Nostra. Like Raham Bell said, that communication is the environment where uh, heritage lives in. And we felt over the last four years that this is really something that is so helpful for us and for heritage in general. We need to spread the word because culture and heritage is always at the border of some other big decisions. But on the other hand, it's so transversal. So uh, it's in each of the domains we have heritage and culture. So we need to get to people uh, and to spread the word also to the ones which never heard about heritage or which want to get involved and they, they never knew how to do it. So I think that's why the Public Choice Award is so important for us all and um, thank you for the invitation. I would like to, to stop now my message uh, and uh, I'm very honored to be part of this uh, big project of uh, Europa Nostra. Thank you so much, Eugen. Um, inspiring, important messages to all the laureates, um, past and present and uh, delighted to have heard that um, this award was not only a recognition for you, but it, it gives you, give, gave you wind in your sails somehow, and that, that you could uh, benefit from that award to further strengthen uh, your work. And um, thank you for 
calling everybody for a social responsibility, that we in the heritage world, we also have a strong social responsibility. And last but not least, something I loved since I also come from uh, um, that part of Europe that you come from as well. When you said there is no Europe with two gears in the heritage world, there is only a one Europe, there is talents and skills and engagements all around Europe. So fantastic to have you as our ambassadors and I hope that all our laureates feel even more encouraged after your work and they will join, join actively uh, our um, movement. So um, we have heard the words of the winner of the Public Choice Award of 2021. Um, we shall know at the award ceremony on the 23rd of September that we hope to organize um, in Venice during a European Heritage Summit. Uh, so we will know who will be the winners this year of the Public Choice Award. Uh, and on that occasion, we shall also reveal the winners of the Grand Prix and also the Illucidare Special Prizes. But in order to be able to uh, unveil the Public Choice Award, you all have to vote. Not only to vote, you are allowed to campaign. You can sort of invite as many people as possible to vote. So um, Commissioner Gabriel already declared the voting open. We just want to show you the video encouraging you. And I think in the chat, you will get the link where you can start voting now. difficult uh, choice because all the award winners are exceptional and we wish you uh, every wisdom and luck in the choice. You have to vote for three projects and only one of the three can be from your own countries. So we really want all of you to demonstrate truly also your dedication as European citizens. So in the chat, you will also find um, a wonderful publication featuring all 24 laureates that our team has prepared. So you can read more about each of the award-winning projects, learn about them, study them. You can also visit our website. Uh, and on the website, you have the dedicated web pages. And for each of the winner, you will find more information with photos and very interesting videos that they have produced. So, dear laureates, dear colleagues and friends, today's announcement is coming to a close. We wish to conclude this moment of joy with some traditional music and dance, 
which will be shared with us by one on of our, our laureates who come from Bulgaria. Their project shows us how the intangible heritage of folklore and dance can foster tolerance and dialogue between communities by nurturing and sharing our rich cultural traditions. Once again, our warmest congratulations to all of the laureates and many thanks to all of you who have joined us for this event from all parts of Europe and beyond. Special thanks to Commissioner De Gabriel, who joined us and stayed with us uh, um, from Brussels, and to our Executive President, Professor Dr. Herman Patzinger, who joined us from Berlin. And of course, a very big applause to the dream team of Europa Nostra, who have organized such a perfect European show for the live announcement of the winners of Europe's Heritage Contest 2021. A wonderful, wonderful European dream team. Let us keep working closely together to put cultural heritage where it belongs, at the very hearts of Europe's revival and of the future of Europe. And don't forget to organize debates of heritage sites to clearly demonstrate that our heritage is not only our bridge to the past, but also a bridge to the future of our Europe. Goodbye, au revoir, da svidane, arrivederci, au wiedersehen, to ziens, slom lib, do vigenia. And to end, dance, please. Dancing is an ancient form of communication, and as such, it's a very important part of our shared cultural heritage. We, the Retanzi Foundation, are very proud to be among 24 winners of Europa Nostra Awards 2021 edition. Now, I want to introduce to you Pletinica Folk Dance Club, who will dance Jensku Kapansku Horo. Enjoy it! <laughs>